This video demonstrates the use of WTX Design Studio to build and deploy a binary transformation map to transform non-XML data into XML data. In this scenario, a business partner is sending order information using a comma-separated value or CSV file. For the B2B gateway routing function and backend processing, an XML file format is needed. WebSphere Transformation Extender or WTX will be used to transform the file from CSV to XML. The following topics will be presented. Creating an input metadata for the CSV file, importing an XML schema, using the mapping tool to build a map, create a functional map for repeating data, using functions to modify data easily, testing a map using the interoperability test service on data power, deploying the binary map to the local store on data power, building a policy with a binary transform action to execute the map, and finally testing the service from end to end using curl. The task is to create a map which will transform a CSV file which looks like this and transform it into a file that looks like this. The requirement is for all data to be mapped as is except for the description field. The backend re process requires that the description field be converted to all uppercase characters. Okay, let's get started. The first step in any transformation task is to define the data for both input and output. For our input file, we know that will be a CSV file consisting of order data. We received some documentation from our customer and they told us that the first record contains partner information followed by some number of individual records that contain information about each item to be ordered. The customer also told us about what each field is for and how it should be mapped to the XML file. They've also given us some sample input data and an output file for testing purposes. So let's take a closer look at the input file. Remember that each field is separated or delimited by a comma and as you can see here, at the end of each record, there's a line terminator character. And remember, there's one header record, followed by some number of detail records. We don't know how many detail records. This is important information for describing your input file. So now that we understand what the input file looks like, we can use WTX to describe the input file. WTX uses a type tree editor to describe input and output files. It's a simple matter of entering the field names into the type tree editor and here you can see these field names have been entered already and they're, they're listed for you in alphabetical order. The next step is to describe the groups of how these fields are arranged in records and finally how the records are arranged in a file. After all the field names have been entered into the type tree editor it's now time to define the groups. The groups define the order in which the fields exist in each record. As you can see here, the header record consists of the record ID, sender, receiver, and date receive fields, and finally, the time receive fields. It's a simple matter of dragging it down to the component area. The detail record is all complete. The next step is to describe how the fields are represented on each record. Remember that there's a comma separating each field, followed by a line terminator. And that's all done in the properties area for each of the groups. If we open up the properties sheet for detail, we can see that the format of the record, the component syntax is delimited, and we're using a literal comma to separate each field. And lastly, for each record, towards the bottom here, we have a terminator which is a literal, and we're using a new line mnemonic to represent the new line character for each record. And finally, the last step in defining our input file in our type tree editor is to describe how the logical records are laid out. In our file group, we've defined one header record followed by some number of detail records. The default number of records is one, so there's no scope after the header, but for detail, we've defined a scope there's at least one and some number of detail records. 
The type tree definition is now complete. The output file will be in XML, and we have an XML schema that the customer supplied to us. Simply import the XML schema using the XML schema importer in Eclipse. By clicking Import and then XML Schema, and then specifying the file name in the XML schema importer dialog. Now that we've built the input type tree and we've imported the XML schema to use as our output metadata, we're ready to start mapping. Using the mapping tool, we have to define the input card and the output card. We do that by adding the input card and filling out this property sheet for the input card. On the property sheet, we specify the name, the name of the type tree, and the starting point for the input card. Remember, we had a file group which defined the entire file so we'll use that as our starting point. The last element you have to specify on your, your input card property sheet is the file path of a test file. We do the same thing for the output card specifying the type tree or the schema, the type for the uh, starting point, and also a test file for output. Once we've defined the input and output cards to the mapping tool, we're ready to start mapping. It's a simple case of dragging and dropping from the input to the output. For example, we're going to map our time received to our time element in our output file. For repeating elements, like the detail records, we have to use a functional map. A functional map is used in WTX whenever there is repeating data. In our case, our detail record repeats, so we need to use a functional map. To use a functional map, simply type in the name of the functional map in the rule line here, and then drag the element name that repeats as a parameter to the functional map. After you have entered the name of the functional map, simply right-click and select Functional Map Wizard. The Functional Map Wizard will run and build you a new submap just for your detail records. When the functional map wizard completes, you will be shown a new map. This map will be constrained to the repeating elements. Remember our repeating element was the detail record. You map the same way you do as the main map. You just drag and drop. Remember we had one more requirement for the item description field to be forced to uppercase. WTX has functions to help you do this. You just drag and drop and the item description field will be forced to uppercase during the mapping process. The next step is to specify the runtime for the map. For our map we're going to be running it on data power. So we'll right click on the map name, click on map settings, and on map runtime We'll change it from WebSphere Transformation Extender to WebSphere Data Power. That's all there is to it. Once you have completed all of your mapping rules, your map is complete and ready to unit test. The first thing to check is to make sure that the icon next to your map looks like a Data Power icon. This means that the runtime has been changed to the data power runtime. Next, configure your data power appliance to test your map by going to Window, Preferences, Transformation Extender, Map, and then Data Power. You will see this configuration dialog. Under the first tab, the Interoperability Test Service, enter the host name of your data power appliance. The Interoperability Test Service must be enabled on your data power appliance for this to work. Once you have configured the interoperability test service on WTX Design Studio, you can now unit test your map. I've emptied the XML files folder so you can see the creation of the output file. When I click run on the map name, it will take the map and the input file, create a package and send it to data power, where data power will execute it and send back the results. 
So I'm going to simply right click, click run, in about two or three seconds you will see the map is run and completed. When I click cancel, the map creates the XML file. I'm going to open the XML file so we can see if it ran okay. There you can see we have our header information, our detail information, and our item descriptions have been folded to uppercase. Now that your map is fully tested, you can deploy your map to DataPower and use it in production. Go back to the Preferences folder or Preferences view using Window, Preferences, Transformation Extender, Map, and Data Power, and go to the second tab, which is the XML Management Interface or XMI service. Type in a user ID, a password, and the domain where you're going to be testing or putting your map into production. Click OK, and now we can deploy the map to Data Power. Once the XMI interface has been configured on WTX Design Studio, you can easily deploy maps to Data Power for further testing or to run in production. Simply right click on the map name and click Deploy to Data Power. You can see here that the map was deployed to Data Power in a matter of seconds. We'll quickly switch over to Data Power and you can see that the map has been deployed. Here we are in the file management system on Data Power and you can see here that in the local directory that the CSV to XML map or DPA file has been successfully deployed. Now that the map has been successfully built and deployed to data power, let's use it in the policy rule. Simply drag the transform action to your policy rule line and double click to configure it. The very first radio button says transform binary. WTX maps are binary transformation maps, so let's select that radio button. You will see that the dialog will change and we will see that a new area comes up that says WTX map file. In our local store, click the drop down and you can see the DPA file that we deployed to Data Power is in the selection list. Select the DPA map and click done. Your policy rule is complete and ready to test. For testing purposes, I've included the policy rule in a multi-protocol gateway on port 8686. I'm going to use curl to test the multi-protocol gateway. So you can see here that I'm running curl. I'm sending the test file to the IP address to port 8686. And I'm going to pipe that to more so we can all see the test results. Once I press enter, you can see that the input file has been converted from CSV to XML and we got the expected results. So in summary, you can see the topics we've covered. We've seen how to create input metadata, how to import an XML schema, how to use the mapping tool, how to create a functional map, using functions to modify data. We've shown you how to test the map using the test service on Data Power, how to deploy the map to Data Power, how to build a pol policy to execute the map in a binary transform, and finally how to test a data power service. Thanks for watching.